Another mining-related conflict has erupted. This time the disputants are the Chaupe family, who are campesinos or peasant farmers from the high Andes in northern Peru, and a multinational gold mining company called Minera Yanacocha. The site of the dispute is a parcel of land known as Tragadero Grande. This land was part of a planned multi-billion dollar mining project called Conga. Both the Chaupo family and Minera Yanacocha claim that they have the right to access and use the parcel of land. Over a number of years, the dispute escalated into a multi-party conflict involving the family, the company, its security team, the police, lawyers, politicians and international NGOs. Tensions between a major developer and local people are common when large projects are developed in remote locations with high levels of poverty and low levels of state governance. In these situations, boundary spanning work can be helpful for developing an understanding of underlying issues and developing strategies to avoid violence and help resolve deep-seated conflict. My work as a researcher in the community aspects of mining often involves bridging the gap between stakeholders with different backgrounds, worldviews and power to influence the process of development. In the Chaupe case, I was part of a fact-finding mission led by Resolve, an independent civil society organisation based in the US that works on natural resource conflicts. Resolve was engaged by Newmont, the parent company to Minera Yanacocha, to appoint an independent team to look into this case. The team was asked to gather facts about the process of land acquisition, adherence to policy commitments, as well as investigate allegations of corporate human rights abuse. Newmont agreed that whatever was discovered, the report would be released into the public domain. In effect, Newmont relinquished control over the process and committed to a high level of transparency for this exercise. Reflecting on my work with the fact-finding mission team and other similar assignments, I'm able to see the value of boundary-spanning leadership. The boundary-spanning leadership model developed by the Centre for Creative Leadership outlines steps that leaders can follow to overcome significant barriers to cooperation in development. Our work in the Chaupe case helps to highlight what is involved in the first step of the model, managing boundaries. After Resolve appointed a team and established the governance arrangements for the project, the team began by identifying research questions, developing an analytical framework and agreeing to timelines for the completion of the mission. This process was undertaken with the input from different stakeholder groups involved in or interested in the conflict including international NGOs that were tracking the case. The team ensured that the terms of reference and the scope of work were developed with input from a very broad range of stakeholders. In this way, the team established clear parameters for engagement and addressed stakeholder concerns ahead of their work commencing. This stage also involved an assessment of the risks that the fact-finding mission could have posed to the family, as well as mitigating strategies. This process is consistent with step one of the model, managing boundaries, and in particular, the practice of buffering. By insisting on these early process steps, the mission director created a space of clarity and shared understanding. This helps stakeholders to feel confident with the process. That took a lot of time, but it was important for establishing the legitimacy of the exercise before collecting data. From there, the work involved data collection, careful record keeping, impartial analysis and ongoing engagement with the parties. The team analysed documents relevant to the conflict, conducted interviews with key informants and held discussions with a wide range of stakeholders. The aim was to collect information, evidence and different perspectives on the issues in order to understand the situation and present both sides of the dispute fairly. The report brought together information that some parties did not previously have access to. This helped to build understanding amongst the parties. The work of the fact-finding mission was not designed to move past the first step in the boundary-spanning leadership model. 
It is hoped, however, that the process of engagement and the report findings help the Chaupe family and Maneri Yanacocha move closer towards mutual understanding and find a pathway to resolution. Dr Paul Williams identified four different roles that leaders might play when working across boundaries and the key competencies needed to excel in these roles. Reflecting on the fact-finding missions process, the key role I believe the mission played was that of interpreter-communicator. The team sought to understand the perspectives of different stakeholders and share this information through a credible report that was available to everyone. All this helped to build a new platform for communication between the parties. The mission director made an enormous effort to ensure that all parties understood the process and the content of the report before its public release. The fact-finding mission team also sought to respond to any concerns raised about the process and communicate as clearly as possible about the team's approach to issues raised. While parties may have disagreed with some of the content of the report, this open communication provided the basis upon which to build trust in the process and in the team. In development, working across stakeholder boundaries in situations of great distrust is never easy and almost always complicated. Successfully working across boundaries can take many years and different groups of people may need to step in at different times in the process to surface information, to help interpret a situation, to aid communication and to bring new perspectives into the mix. The boundary-spanning leadership literature can help us navigate this complex space and offers some very useful strategies to guide our work.